everyone to another episode of Elbows Tight Podcast. It's your host, Travis. And today I have a fantastic episode. We are going to explore the art of balance in work, family, and the world of jiu-jitsu. And today our very special guest is Mike Connor. Uh, Mike is not only a BJJ practitioner as a blue belt, but he also holds a black belt in judo. And if that's not impressive enough, Mike is also an accomplished entrepreneur, a devoted father, and a loving husband. As we dive deep into this topic between harmony, work, family, jiu-jitsu, training, kids, all of it, Mike brings a wealth of knowledge and experience in our discussion. You know, Mike really understands the challenges that many of us face when it comes to juggling these different things and aspects of life and uh, how he has found a way to have a delicate balance between everything. Throughout our conversation, Mike will share, you know, how he practically uses some strategies to implement and improve his own work-life balance in jujitsu and family and all that. So in this episode, we explore six essential ways to achieve a greater balance between life, family, and jujitsu. Uh, you know, we draw on Mike's personal experiences and, you know, how he is a successful as an entrepreneur and a devoted father and husband to his family. And I think it's just a great conversation for a lot of people to have. A lot of us, you know, are balancing between so many different things in our day-to-day lives and jujitsu sometimes could take a back burner to it or something in our life will take a back burner to jujitsu. And I think this episode is great to show that there are different ways and hopefully give you guys some tips on how we do it as, you know, practitioners and fathers and friends and everything like that. So it's it's a phenomenal conversation. Uh, I'm super excited for you guys to listen to it. Make sure you guys uh, listen to the whole way. It's not a dull one at all. And the insight that we have is just incredible. Uh, so without further ado, Let's go ahead and jump into the episode with our buddy, Mike, who's also a member of the community. So he's not just anyone. He's a member of the community, and I really look up to this man. And so let me know how you guys achieve work-life balance with your family and everything like that while still maintaining a jujitsu schedule as well. So remember to check out Elbows Tight everywhere, elbowstight.com. Check out our sponsors down below. And thank you, everyone, so much for the support lately. It's been phenomenal. And Here's a message from our sponsors and then Mike. So thank you guys. We'll catch you later. Peace. Uh Uh-oh. Father's Day is right around the corners and you haven't gotten anything for your dad yet. That's where today's show sponsor comes in, Manscaped. You and I both know he needs some serious grooming in his life. So grab your dad, the Performance Package 4.0, and he'll thank you for helping him tame the beast. (laughs) It's a win-win situation for both mom and dad. Go to manscaped.com and use code ETP20 at checkout for 20% off and free shipping. Imagine surprising your dad with a sleek, well-designed, and optimized grooming kit that says your balls will thank you on the box. You might ask, how is this Lawnmower 4.0 different from other trimmers? Well, this is the upgraded trimmer includes a multifunction on and off switch and can engage in a travel lock. I actually did this to mine a couple times and I was trying to figure it out because I was trying to like turn it on and it didn't work and I was like golly why is this thing not working it's because it was in travel mode so you have to do take it out every once in a while. <laughs> it also gives you the ability to turn the 4000k spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. You can now shave your balls in the dark. Having that LED light, I didn't think it was that big of a game changer, but it really is. The Lawnmower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim through an additional guard links with sizes one to four. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com using code ETP20. Don't forget that you came from your dad's balls. This year, show your original home some love with Manscaped. Have you ever experienced the agony of sleepless nights when you're away from home? Well, let me tell you about a recent trip that I went on that became a sleep disaster. Picture this, you go on a thrilling adventure, leaving behind the comfort of your own bed. Unfortunately, also your beloved pillow. Little did I know the effect it would have on my sleep night after night, struggling to find that cozy, supportive feeling I had grown accustomed to. Now, I know what you're thinking, yeah, 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 Travis, you get paid by Mummy Pillow to promote their brand and their products. And it's very true, I do, but that's only because after using it, I absolutely could not believe how big of an impact it had on my sleep. Mummy Pillow has been a godsend for me and my sleep. Not having it on that trip and sleeping with those hotel pillows 
was horrible. I wish I would have brought it with me. And with mummy pillows, you also get a travel bag that comes with your pillow. So don't be like me. Bring your pillow everywhere you go and enjoy your night of sleep. And let me tell you, coming back home and finally sinking in into the embrace of that mummy pillow was like returning home to a long lost friend. <laughs> It was like my pillow had whispered to me, welcome back, my dear friend, rest well. Go to MVMISleep.com and use code elbows tight at checkout for 15% off. Once again, that's 15% off with code elbows tight at checkout. Sleep ambitiously with mummy. What's up, everyone? Today, I got a very special guest, my buddy, Mike. Uh, he is a listener, he's from the community. And today we were, I wanted to talk to him about something that I think you probably heard me talk about it in the intro before recording this. Uh, I want to talk about how to balance life, work, freaking jujitsu, kids, everything. And I thought Mike would be a great guest to do this with because Mike, you're, you're an average person just like me trying to, trying to make ends meet, trying to freaking get to jujitsu class two, three times a week, dude. So how you doing today? I'm good, man. Great. Living the dream. Like I told you, I'm just kind of, you know, wife is held hostage on the couch right now with a baby. Yeah. Yeah. My wife, my wife has a, our toddler right now. And if the tablet screen turns off within, you know, two seconds, he's like flipping yeah. shit while. Yeah. 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 Then you'll, you'll hear him in the background just like screaming, yeah. but it's, uh, actually he's not that bad, but it's actually yeah. pretty nice. Uh, I was side topic. Uh, I was talking to someone um, when I was flying to North Dakota and the lady that was sitting next to me, she was in her seventies and uh, we were talking about parenting. And I was like, you know, my son's generation, my youngest son's generation are going to be 100% like integrated into technology. So yeah. ha having a tablet is, uh, you know, a great way for him to kind of already get used to that. But, I mean, you're a little bit older than me, but I'm sure you still hear it. Like people are like, oh man, the tablets, electronics. We used to call that parenting back in my day. It's like, yeah, well, yeah. back in the day, you know, you didn't have these tools. I look at it as tools in order yeah, to help me. They had those tools, man. They had those tools, bro. Books, they had TV. Like TV. Well, they, yeah, no, they you had know. TV, right? Like, so I was raised by a single mom. So like she was, she was working like crazy sometimes two or three jobs. And, you know, I get home from school and, uh, you know, if I had homework, I did my homework. And then if it wasn't nice outside, which it rarely was in Hawaii, like, <laughs> I mean, I'd be, I'd be on the TV watching like afternoon cartoons. If I was coming home from like elementary school or watching, you know, MTV whenever I was a teenager. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's no different now. It's just that it's more prevalent and accessible. Yeah. And you know, when we're trying to do something as parents, it's super easy for 15 minutes of silence to just give them something to distract yeah. them and then take yeah. it away. You know, I, I'm very fortunate. My son doesn't flip out too bad sometimes. I mean, obviously yeah. he's a kid, so sometimes he's deep into it, but you know, most of the time yeah. if I'm saying, Hey, let's pause it, let's go outside or do something else. He's, you know, he's, yeah. he, as long as it's with dad, he's pretty happy or with mom, you know what I mean? So yeah, but, with our with our two older boys, we have a rule that like s screen time during the week, like they have to have active time, so they yeah. have to be outside and play. And, and you know, the boys they do jujitsu and they play baseball, um, but you know, the screens come in handy when we're trying to cook dinner and we're trying to like get the little babies kind of put down and put together. And so yeah, yeah. Okay, so hey, let's go ahead and uh, we kind of already talked about the the challenges. Let's let's the first the first thing we want to talk about is understanding the challenges that comes between all these different things that we have in our life and balancing, you know, work, family, uh, jujitsu commitments, and uh, so what what are some challenges that you have on a day to day basis that kind of you know throw a wrench into things when it comes to you trying to train consistently? Oh man, so. Um... I, I kind of, uh, I mean, I own two companies, right? I own a healthcare company and I own a, a software development company. The software development company is kind of a, it's an electronic health record. And so we always have emergencies. We always have like some sort of, oh shit thing that happens. And <clears throat> when those things happen, 
you may have been on the trajectory to like get a great rolling session in um and you just gotta kind of have to eat it um i think sometimes you just kind of kind of have to eat it other times it's you know one of the famous things i'm known for saying is in in our company it's like well we don't we don't work in emergency medicine no one's dying right so is this really an emergency um you know when when kids get sick and they can't do you know and you have to take care of them those are just things you have to kind of eat you have to I feel like you have to acknowledge that um, if you were planning on going to a training session for a day and it doesn't happen, it's okay. You have to yeah. give yourself a little bit of grace, um, especially when things pop up that you can't predict. Um, yeah. You know, those things happen to me a lot. I think <clears throat> the best way to mitigate those things is to be uh, very, very tight with the management of your calendar. Um you know, I, I block off particular lunch blocks during the week just to make sure that I can get training in. I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't look my wife in the face and, and tell her like, Hey, I'm going to go get sweaty with men and maybe a, a few women for a couple of hours tonight. You take care of all the kids at home, right? Like we've got five kids in the house. So it's like, I can't do that. So I have to block off time and, and schedule those things. That's probably like the number one tool. Um, in order to kind of mitigate some of those like quote unquote emergencies and, yeah. you know, uh, and then just kind of reiterate, you have to give yourself some grace. Like sometimes you just, you're going to miss the day that you had planned on going and that's okay. Yeah. I definitely feel that too. Like, um, having a wife that wants to stay physically fit and go to the gym and son's playing football and, you know, people watching my kids for me so I can go to work and make a, a living to provide for my family, all those things come into being a challenge that you have to face to face, uh, face, you know, on a day to day basis. And when you throw something in there that, you know, we see jujitsu as something that not only is physically demanding, but, you know, can be emotionally demanding. And then the challenges that come with that too, it's just, it's a lot to take in. And I, it kind of ties into our, our, our next one. Um, but you have to understand what's a priority in your life and those priorities can change on depending on the day. Like you mentioned, like you a priority at the beginning of the day could be, I want to go train tonight. And then you get home and the kids are sick. There's a lot of work to be done. You get an email that you have to take care of right then. You know what I mean? Like all these things can jump in line and you gotta, you gotta readjust your priorities, you know, as a, as a dad, an entrepreneur, you know, yeah, I'm sure your priorities are fluid depending on the moment of the day. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but there are some yeah. things that we have to like clearly establish <laughs> that this is always, uh, this is always my number one. And to me, it's, you know, making sure my wife is happy because she lets me do these things, uh, religiously or not religiously, but you know, throughout the day, um, like going to jujitsu and stuff like that, you know, uh, having clear priorities and to ensure a healthy balance within the work life, family jujitsu life is a huge, huge key, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, you kind of, you know, most of us who do jujitsu are, are married to other people who like prioritize fitness. <clears throat> um, and we have to be conscientious about that and, you know, and kind of going back to the whole prior prioritizing things, um, and communicating like my wife knows that jujitsu is a way for me to kind of de-stress, right? Yeah. And if I don't get those opportunities, uh, you know, it, it shows in other ways, right? I get a little snippy, get a little irritable. Um, and it's, it's, it's okay. You have to kind of acknowledge those things, but having that ability to just to be able to, to get out the door and prioritize yourself for just, a few hours a week is super important. And the, I think the best analogy I've ever heard is like whenever you're on an airline and the attendant tells you to put on your mask first so that you can help yeah. others around you. It's the same aspect. Um, when you need a, a way to de-stress and pr kind of prioritize yourself, you have to be able to kind of take some of those things and say, Hey, like I'm going to commit to three hours or four hours this week and do some training. And, uh, that's going to be my time to kind of prioritize myself. And then, you know, the remainder of the times are families. Um, you know, my, uh, 
I think most of us who practice jujitsu don't identify as like jujitsu people. They, you know, guys like you and me identify as fathers and husbands first. And then, you know, guys who do jujitsu as well. Uh, unlike CrossFit yeah. where that's like the first thing you talk about is CrossFit. <laughs> uh, as a former CrossFitter, I, I, I can yeah. either confirm yeah. nor deny. So what, what <laughs> tips do you have for prioritizing, uh, you know, key commitments, uh, in your in your day-to-day life to ensure that you know everyone's cup is full by or f- at least somewhat filled by the end of the day or week I check or in. month you know what i mean <clears throat> yeah check in with your significant other if you have a significant other and you're trying to prioritize your training you know like for guys like us that are married and have kids you have to check in with your wife you have to be like hey is there anything you need is you know do you want to go to the gym do you need some time um absolutely i try to you know um, when the baby's being a lot, you know, I'll say, Hey, do you want me to take over? So I can, so you can get a break. Um, and that's a lot of the things that I learned from her, uh, cause she's very good about that. And then, um, giving them their time as well, right? Like we can't just take, take, take. I heard, I saw this little clip of a podcast with Tim Ferriss and Brene Brown, um, big fan of Tim Ferriss, like kind of changed my life by listening to his podcasts. Uh, but um, she was talking about how people will say that relationships are 50, 50 and they're not right. Like hundred, a hundred you know, relationships are, are very rarely 50, 50 relationships are sometimes 20, 80, sometimes they're 70, 30, sometimes they're 10, 90, and it's going to be, you know, incumbent upon the person, the relationship to say, Hey, is there something I can do, or do you need something, or can I do something for you that's going to help out? Uh, whenever you've got that twenty percent or that ten percent, and that other person struggling with a lot, a good example um, is uh, I finished up a doctoral program around um, a while back, and our uh, our our oldest baby, who's eighteen months old, um, was. Uh, was born at the time and it was, it was brutal, right? Cause I was probably four to six hours of sleep and my wife was, I mean, she was just doing the lines. Sure. You know, I was running a company, going to school, finishing up assignments, going to jujitsu, still going to jujitsu, right? Raising the kids, taking them to practices, but she was doing a lot of stuff. And, you know, I'd, I'd hole up in this office until about midnight and then go to the bedroom she'd be up with the kids um but yeah kind of digress there but basically you've got to you got to check in with your partner you know yeah that's that's i that's how i am too with my wife you know i kind of i set a goal of training two to three times a week but it really depends on like the home situation and um how how everything at home is going, whether it's with my mother-in-law that's living with us right now or with my wife who hasn't been out of the house for two or three days because she teleworks and taking care of the kids and, and so on and so forth, you know, just making sure that her cup is filled as much as she lets me fill mine, uh, is, is a huge aspect of our marriage that, uh, I try to, I try to focus on. And once again, it kind of ties into our, our, our next one, which is open communication and support, which is my wife supports me in doing jujitsu, which is one of my favorite hobbies in my life right now. And so I have to be able and willing to support her and her hobbies, you know, and if it involves me taking a day off jujitsu so she can go do something like work out or go be with friends or whatever it is, you know, even if she wants to go get her nails done, hair done, eyebrows, whatever, lashes, yep. you know, if it, if pedicure, if manicure, if she, yeah, man. Yeah. What, whatever it time. is, I, I <laughs> wholeheartedly, and you know, she's, she's, my wife is amazing, you know, and this episode is being, yesterday was four years of doing this podcast yesterday. And so I've been doing this podcast every week, almost for four years, almost every week. And I honestly couldn't do it if she didn't support me and if I didn't support her in return, you know? And I just think a simple coming home and saying, hey, go do whatever you want for the next couple hours. Like, don't even worry about it. I got the kids. I got everything around the house is such a monumental thing 
and it can be seriously overlooked. You know, even there's even times when she's like, Hey, when you come home, I want to go to the gym and I get home and the kids start freaking out or, you know, they need baths or they want to go outside or whatever. And then my wife can feel overwhelmed as well. You yeah. know, and she's like, well, never mind. I'm just not going to go to the gym. It's like, no, no, I have no, this. No, go. go to yeah. the gym. Like, get <laughs> out. Go do it. You know, supporting each other and having that open communication is, man, it is the most important thing when it comes to my marriage. Because yeah. it's without, my passion of jujitsu could easily overtake both of our lives. You know, my podcast, um, all these things that I do could easily overtake both of our lives and that's not good for either one of us. And this is man, yeah. woman, whatever, the, your sure. significant other, if you have a significant other, you know, like you mentioned, like checking in and showing support for each other and being flexible is monumental in yeah. ensuring everyone. I always say cup is, you know, fill your cup, fill their cup. You know, I, I'm kind of an optimistic person, so my glass is always half full. Some people's glasses are always half empty, but... <laughs> Yeah, you know that's just yeah. that's just to me. It's just you got to have that communication with your significant other. Yeah, <clears throat> and you have to know how to communicate to your significant yeah. other too, right? Like you can't just, um, you know, you know, people talk about the five love languages book. I've done some training with my business coach at Market Force on like personality types, not like Myers Briggs, but like um, a different type of personality type, and just kind of understanding what what speaks to your partner and how to show love and affection, how to let them know that you care, those sorts of things really kind of help, help you get, be successful at your goal, right? Like you can't just, you know, communicate in an inefficient manner and expect to get to the gym three times a week. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, that Chelsea, you know, for the most part knows that, you know, probably like I want to get to the gym three or four days a week. Right. I, I, I run open mats on Fridays at our gym for the most part, unless I've got like a last minute competing meeting or some business travel that needs to occur. And, uh, and part of that <clears throat> is, you know, putting it on the calendar or if I'm not putting it on the calendar, I'm communicating well ahead of time. And then when I say it, I, I'll also follow it up with, is there anything you need me to do? Or is there anything I can do to kind of help out yeah. before I go out? And just kind of doing those things really kind of sets you up for success. Um, I think that's such it, a powerful question, it. too, is instead of yeah. saying, like, hey, can I go do this? I, yeah. I think asking your significant other, what do I need? What do you need from me so I can go do this? Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Or if I'm able to go do this, I think yep. readjusting that question. So it's it's more fulfilling to them to, yeah. you know, mention something rather than say, hey, can I go do this? And your significant other like, yeah, go right ahead. You know, but there yeah. could be, uh, I'm not a relationship uh, counselor or anything like that, but it could build up resentment because they're obviously going to most of the time say yes, you know, well, but if yeah, you say, man, what if can I do gone for like eight to 10 hours a week, fucking rolling with sweaty dudes <laughs> while you're, <laughs> while your significant others like struggle busting at home with the kids and like shuttling oh, them to and from practices like, oh yeah, they're going to be resentful. Right. So like, Hey, can I you know, prep dinner. Hey, can I, you know, like feed the dogs before I leave? Or, Hey, can I change diapers? Or like, you know, Hey, after jujitsu, do you need me to pick up the boys from baseball practice? Right? Like that's one thing we'll do sometimes is I'll coach the kids class and, you know, the other boy has baseball. So like, I'll take one, I'll take the boys to jujitsu practice while the other boy goes to baseball practice and she takes them and then she goes home. And then after jujitsu practice is over, I'll run over the baseball field, pick up the boy. And then, I mean, it just like those, those little simple things rather than just, you know, it, it's a level of maturity too, right? Like I certainly probably yeah, wouldn't have been that way when I was fucking 20 or 22. Agreed. You know? Agreed. Um, I'd be super selfish. Like I'm 40, uh, yeah, I'm 47. I'll be 48. So I've learned a lot of lessons along the way. So it's like, yeah, man, like take care of your partner because she's taking care of you. Yeah, that's what I tell my wife too. It's like, I feel, I, we started dating in, when I was 25, 26 years old. And I'm mm -hmm. about to be 34 in December. And I just feel like if, we, we took a long time to get married. It was like almost five years dating before I proposed to her. 
And my idea behind it was I just I just didn't feel like I was at a point in my life yet to where I could have like been a good husband. You know what I mean? And so I didn't yeah. want our marriage to fail. And because it's a that's a big thing in my my life, in my family, on my on my dad's and mom's side. Well, yeah, both sides of my family is divorces. Everyone's been divorced at least once. And yeah. so yeah. my whole idea is I don't want that. Like I'd love my wife beyond belief and I don't ever want to risk losing that. So I just took a long time to propose a little bit off topic, but it goes yeah. back to jujitsu. No, I mean, that's so insightful, now, right? No, I don't yeah. think anybody goes into a marriage thinking to themselves like, Hey, I want to get divorced in like five, to 10 years, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, yeah. It just, it just happens. It's a part of life, but that was very insightful on your, on your part. Well, yeah. And so tying it back to jujitsu. So now when it comes to like, I constantly have that, that fear of like, I don't want to mess something up. So, and it's not like a fear, like I'm walking on eggshells, but like, I'm just very self-conscious about like what I do as a husband to make sure that, you know, that open communication with my wife to make sure that her cup is constantly being filled so I can do things because jujitsu, like you mentioned earlier for me is also like a stress relief. You know, there's days where I'm like, man, I don't want to go train, but I get there and I'm like, God, I'm so happy I went and trained. And then I come, come, come home and be a better, better partner, a better father, a better friend, uh, you know, just all these other aspects because I allowed myself to not take out my frustration at home on my family, but, you know, more controlled and humbling on the mats, you know what I mean? So, yeah. and there's like the whole <laughs> physical fitness aspect of it and, and whatnot. But yeah, it checks a I bunch of man. blocks off, right? Mental yeah. and physical fitness, you know, being present, right? Like whenever you're at work, I'm not worried about yeah. like patients that, you know, our, some of our healthcare team is seeing. I'm not worried about what department's going to come on board next. I'm not worried about staffing in the next quarter. I'm not worried about research papers that are coming up that are in pre-publication. Like I'm worried about beating the cross face. I'm worried about like getting the <laughs> underhook. I'm worried about like, yeah. you know, the 270 pound giant named Michael freaking crushing my skull with his palm. So, um, yeah, no, those are, those are all very salient kind of points about jujitsu is that they kind of help you kind of recharge your battery um, and I think that's, you know, certainly one of the best behavioral health aspects of jujitsu. Yeah. So it sounds like you, you have a, a lot of things going on in your day. Let's go into our, our, our next tip of uh, effective time management. How mm. do you effectively, you mentioned your calendar earlier. We've mentioned communication yeah. with our, our yeah. spouses. How do you effectively uh, manage time as someone that has so many hats throughout your day? Yeah, so I can't remember the author's name. I've got his book in here, but it's called Atomic Habits. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he talks about these Ryan things Hall? being... Is it Ryan Hall? No, no, Ryan no, Hall is that's a the, Stoic. The, yeah, Ryan Hall is the daily Stoic. He goes yeah. the enemy. Yeah. So he calls this a uh, productivity bomb. He calls this if you guys aren't else. If you guys aren't watching, it's Mike's holding up his yeah, cell it's, phone. It's, it's my cell phone, right? So <laughs> anything that could potentially distract you from the thing that you are focused on, if it is within a arm's reach, I think he said six feet actually in the book, but if it's within arm's reach, <clears throat> it is something that is going to distract you. Right. And we've all done it. Right. Like, you know, you send me, you know, Absolutely. you send me messages sometimes from work on your phone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I send you messages sometimes from work on my phone. I also program breaks in. Like I've got, um, I, I won't say it's bad, um, ADD, ADHD or anything like that, but it's, it's, it's present. Um, so, uh, one of the things I learned whenever I was going through, um, medical training was, uh, that I need breaks. Um, sometimes every 20 to 25 minutes, I'll get up, I'll walk around, you know, I'll go inside the garage gym and do some pull-ups or some push-ups, you know, refill my water, come back, sit back down and, and go back down to productivity. Mm, but eliminating things idea. that are going to be eliminating things that are going to be distracting for you from your immediate area. And then um, the other thing would be to give yourself a break, a cognitive break from the task. If you are focusing, focusing on a very mental, heavy, heavy task, you know, if I'm if I'm, you know, doing some research stuff or if I'm doing work stuff that's operations or work stuff that is like um, owner development. 
uh, I, I give myself a break to just kind of walk out of there. There's also like pharmaceutical assistance, right? Like you can take some Ritalin, you can take some of that other stuff, you can take modafinil, <laughs> um, <clears throat> to be CBD. prescribed by your healthcare no. provider. Yeah. 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 CBD for chilling. Um, but you know, just kind of some of those things are kind of the simplest things, honestly, is just kind of clear the space out from distractions, give yourself breaks and so that you can stay on task. And then if something, you know, and then, uh, if you're working from home, you know, one of the things that is probably the hardest thing to do is, uh, if you're working on a new project, it's hard to determine how much time it's going to take. So overestimate the time it's going to take so that if you get it done faster, you have a little bit more free time. Mm. Um, don't, don't, you know, say that you've got to build like a, a large presentation, uh, that needs to be submitted, uh, to like organizations and say, Oh yeah, that'll take about 45 minutes to get done. Right. Cause it's probably not, um, be realistic with some of those things. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Time management for me is probably my weakest area. I definitely, I've read the book atomic habits and I definitely yeah. don't integrate any of that into my life. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I probably should, like I should, I was all the time. I'm thinking about, I need to do a calendar with my wife where we can both put in everything that we want to do to make sure that um, it's that we're both, you know, filling our cups. I keep going back to using that word, filling your cups, probably overusing it now, but I think it's sure. uh, it's an integral part of our relationship. And maybe if you guys are at home and you know a good app that my wife and I can use that is, you know, we have to, obviously we have to be diligent and we have to be purposeful with the app, but something that makes it a little bit easier. We have like Google calendars, but she has an iPhone and I, and uh, I have, you know, the most complex machine in the world, a, a Google pixel. So it's like, <laughs> it's like something that can work cross platforms. But as when it comes to like time management, we usually talk to each other and we're like, Hey, this is all everything that needs to be done today. You know, our son has to be picked up from football. My, my mother-in-law got her driver's license. So now I no longer have to pick her up to and from work which is, you know, a big, big time restraint also. So luckily that's off the table, but like kids appointments, grocery shopping, all this and that, there's just like so much that goes into a day-to-day life that it's just, it's crazy if, if we, and also it kind of goes back to like previously before, I can't be the one always dictating what the schedule is going to be like. I have to, I have to take a step back also and, you know, put specific time out there for my wife to do something also. And she teleworks, like I mentioned, like you, you mentioned, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that go into that too. And so some like literally, literally there's been like a week where she hasn't left the house because she just wakes up, goes to her desk and starts working. And then, you know, I go pick up the kids or whatever. So she'll, I'll be like, Hey, do you want me to go pick up Charles from, for football, or do you want to? And she's like, I- I'm going to go do it. I need to get some sunlight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So, but time management is definitely probably my, my weakest area when it comes to trying to ensure everything is getting done in my life along with jujitsu. Because there's sometimes practice goes a little bit longer, or uh, there's something I forgot that we had scheduled, you know, as someone with ADHD, I forget a lot of things. You know, I'm going to be yeah. honest with you guys. <laughs> no, no, man. Like my, my wife is really, really good about like putting everything into the calendar, right? Doctor's appointments, practice, like practice times, game times, like field locations for the game times, like all of that stuff. Um, almost to like a obsessive, um, degree, but it's great. That's nice. That's nice. It, it always pops up in my calendar. Like, Hey, you know, Brian baseball freaking uh field three you know so it's like i know yeah. like hey i've got to go to the baseball field three and that's where i'm going to be picking him up for practice and it's just one of those things where <clears throat> it can uh it can really make life a lot easier but it requires a lot of front end work and i think that's kind of what puts people off is like man i gotta put everything in a calendar and I gotta, yeah you know do this and it's just like yeah, but in the in the end, when you're living a busy life, it's just kind of a necessity. You know, um, one thing that I've and, noticed with being a uh, sorry to cut you off, but it just it came yeah, straight to mind. I was thinking about this. One thing I've noticed is uh, 
because I have to purposely make jujitsu fit my lifestyle, I haven't gone through like a burnout or blue belt blues or anything like that because I'm so grateful for the time that I do get to go train that I'm there yeah. and I'm like, man, I had to squeeze in 15 other things today in order to yeah. to get to training. But when I first started jujitsu, I our life was was completely different. We had one kid, you know, and he was he was in jujitsu with me and my wife, you know, we had just a completely different life. We didn't have three kids at the time. And I wasn't nearly as busy as I am now. And I mentioned this before because I trained so much during that time. I kind of had burnout right after I got my blue belt. But now, because I don't have that much time to train, whenever mm -hmm. I get to train, I'm there and I'm excited. I'm ready to go. It's, yeah, you're grateful. I'm grateful. I'm 100% grateful. Yeah. I get to go train. It's not, it's, I, my mindset shifts from I need to go it's, train yeah, to I get to go train. It's not I have to go train. Yeah. It's not I have to go train. It's I get to go train. Right. Like, yeah. When you when you have a tight schedule and you get an opportunity to train, like it's exciting, you know, like yes, this <clears throat> this week, I really lucked out. Right. Like I went on Wednesday night for open mat, uh, hit a Thursday noon class, uh, actually um, taught that class and then had open mat on Friday and then Saturday um, went to class from 10 30. So I got four days in a row. I'm feeling it now. Yeah, <laughs> <Like> I'm totally <laughs> sore. I'm feeling it now. But I got four days of training in, and it's it was just like absolutely great, right? Because before that, I was in Colorado. I had meant to go to uh, this gym that I really like out there called C's MMA. It's owned by um, uh, Mike and Barb Sislanovich. Uh, he's a former UFC fighter. Um, <clears throat> and it's a great gym, great community. The last time I went out there, and I was looking forward to doing it, but I couldn't because I was like so busy with work. So I had essentially gone like, almost 10 days with zero training and yeah all i was doing to de-stress was like you know we did some like uh trail runs up in the mountains and then yeah. did the manitou incline and like had a lot of fun but it's not the same uh yeah and so when i got back i was just like oh man i get to go train this is awesome you know yeah so yeah what, it's, what it's just you your mindset from it's just your mindset from having to to being grateful for Absolutely. And one way you can also uh, kind of tie in, to, once again, I keep saying tie in. I need to, I need to find some better verbiage for this podcast because I always repeat myself when it comes to... Yeah, you to say connect. <laughs> but connect connect that with... Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to get like the, the flow chart in the Synthesize. background. <laughs> uh, but integrating jujitsu into your family is another key aspect to in making sure everything is, is cohesive. When it, when it comes to integrating jiu-jitsu into my family time, my oldest son does train jiu-jitsu. I try to get my yep. wife to train. She doesn't. I was actually just talking to Jordan Pressinger <laughs> about this earlier today. And, but uh, I'm trying to get my I, wife to train, right? Like, she wrestled yeah. in high school, and, and <laughs> I know she would be good at it, right? But it's, yeah. she's just like, no, I'm not really interested. <laughs> just yeah, like, okay, I, I talked fine. to Jordan Pressinger earlier, and um, yeah. his wife is yeah, his Nikki. wife's a brown belt or something, It's right? a brown belt, and yeah. she's, like, super yeah. legit, actually, too. Yeah. And uh, I was talking to him, and I was like, man, it's got to be an amazing feeling knowing that you have that connection with your wife, and you both are yeah. high-level athletes, and she's close to being a black belt as well. I was like, it's got to be a, a, an amazing feeling as a husband, having that connection with your wife. And he's like, it is. He's like, honestly, it makes training so much more fun. It makes in incorporating jujitsu in my family time so much more fun because she's passionate about it. Both his or All three of his kids are in it. And so I really try to do that too. You know, I have a tournament coming up next weekend and my wife and kids are going to come watch me get smashed for three matches. You know, sure. my oldest son is... Watch you smash is, for three matches, right? Mindset. Yeah, let's get that mindset, yeah, yeah. right? Ah, let's be a little realistic here. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like my oldest son trains jujitsu and right now he's in football so he doesn't get to train uh, because yeah. he does it... Uh, <clears throat> Just priorities. I, I tell him all the time, like, he's like, I would like to do football and jujitsu. I was like, well, if you do football and jujitsu, you have to leave football practice and then go to jujitsu because there are, there's yeah. not opposite days of football practice. Um, he's like, yeah. yeah, I don't want to do that. I was like, yeah, 100%. But, you know, on the off season, he does do jujitsu with me. And I honestly, I think incorporating my family into it and making them a bigger part of it 
gets everyone excited when jujitsu is on the table you know what i mean i'll be completely honest with you right like i selfishly like make my boys go to jujitsu i I, I don't want (laughs) to say make they they love going right my yeah my oldest boy luke he uh he he's actually got like a lot of real talent for it and it's kind of surprised me because um you know i have a judo background and luke um you know, I'll play around with Luke sometimes. And like the first time he went in, he like hit, he hit some kid with an Ogoshi. And I was just like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. yeah hip toss, right? Like this <laughs> awesome hip toss. And, 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 uh, <clears throat> and then, and then he like nails like that, you know, the major outer reap, the Osotogari throw on, uh, on another kid. And I was just like, Oh my God. So it's, it was, but I initially, yeah, exactly. Right. And, um, and initially, but initially I, I, I got him into it because I was just like, oh, well, like I'm here. They should do something physical. They like to wrestle and I, I teach them how to box, but they like to wrestle. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get them into jiu-jitsu. So it's just a way to like kind of get everyone involved. And then, you know, it's it's kind of easy to get the buy-in whenever you say like, hey, I'm going to jiu-jitsu. It's like, oh, yeah, the boys have jiu-jitsu too, so you might as well go. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you noticed any benefits when it comes to having your family in jujitsu, like as it like a relationship aspect or anything like that? Have you seen any benefits from it? Uh, communication, uh, specifically when I'm talking about like particular moves. <laughs> That's about it. No, my wife, God bless her, man. Like she, you know, one of our, <clears throat> one of our, uh, our operations managers is actually a black belt in jujitsu. He's really, really, really good. Um, and he's a good friend of mine and, uh, I guess he and Chelsea were sitting in the office one day and he just kind of curiously asked her, he's like, Hey, does Mike ever talk to you about jujitsu? And she was just like, Oh my God. Yes, he does. Like, (laughs) you know, he'll come home and, you know, he'll come home and say that he was like wrestling some belt guy and say that like he hit a roadrunner katana on somebody and, (laughs) 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 <laughs> and, i have no uh, idea what he's talking about but yeah and, and it's exactly right man so um but yeah you know i mean the communication and then um i mean involving the family in it as certain i think i feel like it's made me and the boys a lot closer um because i would agree you know it helps them struggle you know and it <clears throat> it builds character and grit and i think that a lot of that is missing um today that's a separate conversation but Um, But for the boys, it's good for them, you know, because I I want them to know that, you know, hey, when they're struggling with something, they can come to me for an answer, just like in jujitsu as well as in life. Right. I might dad might know something about it. So, yeah, I've noticed that, too, when well, Charles and I's relationship has grown immensely also because of other reasons. Uh, Just my parenting shift has changed a little bit when it comes to him. But. I think also another benefit that comes from incorporating my kids into jujitsu and maybe my wife is like my kids grew up seeing me be physically active, right? I'm not a couch potato. They're in the garage yeah. with us when we work out They're Yeah. My son's at the jujitsu mats watching me sweat and get into it. Like I may yeah. be a little overweight right now, but it's not, it's not like I'm out of shape. I mean a little bit, but like, it's not like I'm a, yeah, and it's no offense to bigger people out there that listen to the show that have kids, but you know I'm not sitting on the couch eating potato chips, not You're not being, being active. Yeah, You're I'm trying to be an example, example for them. That's, like I'm, I'm trying to better myself physically, mentally, emotionally. Kids I'm trying are to show always my watching what we're doing. Yeah, kids are always watching what we're doing, and they mimic right. So my middle boy, you know, he's my Matthew McConaughey kid. That's gonna be like a, a ski bum or a surf bum. Yeah, <laughs> that has like that. He's got such a great attitude, but he, you know, he'll occasionally be like, he'd be like, Hey dad, um, we haven't like worked out in a while in the gym. You want to go work out in the gym? And he's like eight years old. You know? <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah. yeah, man, like, let's go hit it up. You know, like we'll go do some push ups and sit ups. <laughs> yeah. Our, so Charles, since he started football, um, He's he was last season he played linebacker and Charles is probably mm-hmm. five seven five eight at fourteen years old and 
Uh, he's maybe like a buck twenty, buck thirty. So he's a tall, slender kid. <laughs> he's just he's just real thin. <laughs> he's like super thin. And so he, as playing yeah. a quarterback or as playing a linebacker, uh, a lot of kids just pushed him around. I was like, hey, well, yeah. a way that you can stop doing that is we can get stronger. We can go to the gym, <laughs> squats. <whatnot."> yeah, <laughs> squats, right? get get those get those squats. legs, get those <laughs> legs nice and strong. And uh, my wife went to the gym the other day after picking up Charles from I don't remember where he was at. I think he was at a. He did something, but my wife was like, ah, oh, I got to get him home. And then, then I got to go back to the gym. And I was like, hey, just take Charles to the gym with him. Yeah. yeah. And so he, she's like, oh, that's a great idea. I didn't even think about that. And so they went and worked out together and what a yeah. great experience for both of them. You know what I mean? Doing something that they both enjoy. No, yeah, but Charles came home. Yeah. yeah. And Charles came home and he's like, you know what? Working out is fun. He's like, I didn't think it would be fun, but that was a lot of fun just going to the gym and lifting weights. He's all like, yeah. he's talking to me about it. I was like, yeah, that's awesome, man. Like, we got to keep he's doing like, yeah, it. Yeah, working out is fun, Dad. Uh. <laughs> I'm like, let me see your biceps. And he's like, oh, you yeah. know. <laughs> but you know, it's, <clears throat> no. it's incorporating yeah, it's them and bringing them into what you love. Dude, it is so cool watching them experience yeah. it. And then them realizing like, oh, I enjoy this too. Like, it's super yeah. cool to see. Well, then doing so. the things that you enjoy doing, like working out and jujitsu, isn't like just about you anymore, right? So the buy-in gets a little bit easier. Your work-life balance, like if they're going to jujitsu practice and you're going to jujitsu practice or they're going to the gym and you're going to the gym, like my daughter and I, you know, sometimes we'll go, she plays, um, she's a varsity athlete at the high school here and she plays soccer. And so she's also, a, you know, likes to lift weights. And so we got memberships to Gold's Gym. And so, because we'll go to Gold's Gym together and lift weights, right? She doesn't want to do it inside the garage gym sometimes. And I'm just like, all right, man, whatever, you know, but <laughs> it's My wife's it's the fun. same way. She's like, I don't I want to get out of the house and go work out. I want to be around other yeah. people. And I'm like, sometimes all right, it's good I to guess. remove yourself. Yeah. That's another, that's yeah. another like productivity thing too, is that like, it's, it's sometimes good to remove yourself from a situation because then it allows you to think on it a little bit more deeply in a different situ in a different setting um that can probably be a little bit more beneficial for your problem yeah agreed and so for the the last thing and this kind of all incorporates into the the last point or tip or whatever you want to call uh mindfulness and self-care we've kind of touched mm -hmm. on this the the whole yeah. time about how's the daily stoic going uh and so let's go back to what i was talking about uh <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, so I was, Mike, Mike got me back into journaling more and the daily stoic book. And, uh, I would be lying if I said I've been on top of it every single day, a hundred percent. I've actually been on a break from it just because I, I've, like I mentioned, my ADHD came in. Yep. Yeah. Is so it? Mike's holding up right this here. daily stoic. Yep. The book and the journal. Yeah. And I did notice a big mind shift when I did jot down in the mornings after reading a passage from the daily stoic and then writing down my thoughts, I definitely felt more level headed and cleared and I need to get back to it. But the mindfulness yeah. and self care, you know, it's, it's super important when it comes to jujitsu because as parents, we have to show up for our children. And in order for us to show up for our children, we have to be the best version of ourself most of the time. I'm not going to say hundred percent of the time because no one's perfect, but most of the time yeah. we have to be the best versions of ourselves for them. And if we don't take care of ourselves spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, we can't be there for them. And I think jujitsu is a great aspect of that and a great tool to do that because it hits, like you mentioned, Mike, it hits a lot of those boxes. It hits, a, mm -hmm. you know, you can experience all those things in, in one jujitsu class and you know, being jujitsu is a stress reliever for me, and it has a, a just a lot of positive impact on physical and mental side for me. Even though sometimes you get hurt or whatever, and you got to take a step back from training, but it's it's such yeah. a great tool to for that mindfulness and self care. Yeah, no, um, really, really agree on those things. You know, jujitsu, like you said, checks off a lot of those blocks because like you're getting your physical conditioning in. Yeah. You're kind of de-stressing, you know, you're not choking somebody in human resources or, <laughs> you know, an annoying customer or anything yeah. like that. Um, and then you're mindful, right? Like you have to be mindful when you're rolling against somebody. You can't just kind of space out and think about tomatoes or anything. You have to sit there yeah. and um, kind of focus on the task at hand. And self-care, you know, <clears throat> self-care comes in a lot of forms. <clears throat> My wife... You know, she's a, 
she comes up with these very, very clever analogies sometimes. Like if you don't, you know, if you put a pot of boiling water on the stove and you put the fire on the lowest setting and you cover the pot, eventually that water gets hot, starts to boil, and then if you don't release the valve and let some of the steam off, it's going to boil over, right? And it's a great analogy for life because if you're not taking care of yourself, you're just kind of closing that lid and then things start to boil over into other aspects of your life. And, you know, unfortunately, <clears throat> most of the time, a majority of the time, that, that boils over in our personal lives with our families. You know, and, and like I said at the beginning, I think, you know, you and I both understand that, like, we're fathers and husbands first before any of those other things. Um... So you have to prioritize taking care of yourself. And, and that can come in many aspects, right? That can, you know, self-care can be getting to the gym three times a week. Self-care can be getting to jujitsu three times a week. It may be a counseling appointment with someone that you need to talk to because you're, you know, you're kind of depressed or you've got anxiety or, you know, things are kind of, you know, you've got some experiences in the past. But you have to take care of yourself in order to kind of make some of those things in your other aspects of your life kind of really uh flourish yeah when i tell my son uh i'll ask him you know did you turn in your classwork did you do these things <laughs> that you know should be a priority and i tell him all the time or he tells me all the time obviously oh no i forgot oh i didn't do that i was like well did you yeah. remember to do this did you remember to do you know these fun things he's like yeah i was like well that's the thing is in life you make you remember things that you press as a priority that you put as a priority. If it's not a priority to you, it doesn't matter how important it is to it's supposed to be to you. If it's not a priority towards you, then you're not going to you're not going to do it. You know, getting good grades or passing high, graduating high school is a big priority to him. It should be, right? But if it if he doesn't make it that priority, then it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter how important it is to him. And it goes into and I'm not saying my son's not going to graduate high school or anything, like that, but I'm just saying, like, when it comes to school, <laughs> just just an idea. But you know, self care being and being mindfulness and putting that as something that should be a, a forefront to yourself to allow yourself to grow. And it doesn't necessarily even even self care, like you mentioned, doesn't have to be working out, or it could be just like I just want to go out with my wife for the night yeah. and you know, have fun. Like last night, my wife and I went out for her birthday and it was great. We had a couple of drinks. We had a tomahawk steak, a 38 ounce tomahawk steak split between the two of us, you know, and it, we, we had dessert and none of those things are healthy physically, right? There's too many calories, too much yeah. alcohol. Like, you know so, what I mean? Like physically that sugar. wasn't, yeah. yeah, it physically that wasn't self-care, but mentally it was self-care for both of us because it allowed us to relax. It allowed us to interact with each other in a mature fashion and you know kind of just like be with each other outside of the day-to-day -day grind and i think i think when we think about self-care especially when it comes to the jujitsu or just any any activity or athlete aspect you know we automatically go towards being healthy in the sense of you know counting our macros, ensuring that we're, you know, diligent yep. about everything, but it doesn't have to always be that. Having a cheat meal to reset your mind because you've been going through some crazy stuff is is beneficial and that can be self-care. You know, I just what what works for you is what works for you. Don't listen to what everyone else says it should be or it shouldn't be. You know, it, to me two training two times a week is a godsend. You know what I mean? Like if I can make it to yeah. the third, it's I'm like checking, like writing down on the calendar, like, oh my gosh, I <laughs> today this week was amazing. I went three times a week, yeah. you know? So it just it really depends on you and your lifestyle. What is self-care and what is it what it means to being mindfulness? Um, and then just incorporating those into your day-to-day -day life, uh, your work, home, whatever it is, it's you guys gotta look down or sit down and kind of I, I don't want to say priority again but just understand what it is for you that each one of those things are because it's going to look yeah, different for everyone else yeah what'd you say yeah just list them out i said just oh. list them out right like yeah. what are the things that you need to get done for the week what are the things that you want to get done for the week what is a priority to you you know like <clears throat> one of the things that you know 
um, my wife and I will do sometimes is, you know, it's Sunday, so sometimes she'll ask me, like, hey, what's this week look like coming up? So I'll bust open the calendar and I'll tell her I got meetings on these days. I'm going to try and do this. I want to go to jiu-jitsu on these days. Um, you know, I've got a friend coming over. They're going to hang out on this night. Um, that sort yeah. of stuff. And, um, you know, it it gives them an opportunity to, to download to you what they've got going on. And then you can kind of communicate, again, going back to the communication thing, because then you can communicate, okay, well, this is going to be a conflict. Like, is there something that you need or is there something that I can do to help out with that? Yeah. Um, it all, it all, Absolutely. it all, I mean, I mean, honestly, this whole, this whole balancing your life as like a parent, an employee, an employer, a student, um, a husband, like it all boils down to communication and then management, right? Like there's a very famous saying, you know, what gets, um, oh man, what gets managed gets, um, or what gets, I can't even think of it now. But, it's a great saying. Oh, man. Yeah. No, basically, what, what, basically, ba- basically, the saying says like if you're not if you're not paying attention to it. Oh, what gets measured gets managed, right? So what gets oh, okay, measured yeah, yeah, gets yeah. managed, right? So if you're measuring, you know, these things, or you know, you're managing these things, you're looking at those things ahead of time. You're going to be able to hit those goals. It's just it's you know it takes work and sometimes people don't realize it until it's too late, you know, until they're like in their fourth decade of life. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's one of the things I try to impart to like all of our kids is like, Hey, like what is a priority for you? What should be a priority for you? Yeah. One thing I always tell people, uh, including my wife is when it comes to saying you're going to do something, Think of it in the aspect of if you were to tell your boss that you were going to do, you were going to show up to work on time and you didn't, uh, what would happen, right? It'd be Bad things would happen. You know, you show your boss the respect of saying you're going to do something and then doing it because you, you know, you make that a priority. But when it comes to our personal life, if you say, I'm going to go to the gym three times this week, we'll come up with every excuse not to do it. Or why sure. we wouldn't do it. So we disrespect ourselves more than we disrespect someone else. You know what I mean? And to me, that's yeah. that's a, not a healthy hab, uh, not a healthy habit to have with yourself. If you say you're gonna do something, you should make it a priority and do it. Think about if you were to tell someone else you're gonna do something, you wouldn't want to let them down, but you're okay with letting yourself down. And we shouldn't be that way. And I'm that way. And I'm not perfect. You know what I mean? But I try. Yeah. I truly try to say, hey, I'm gonna go work out today when I get home. I try my damnedest to make sure that I work out when I get home. But once again, sometimes things happen. But, you know, if if we're constantly saying we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and then we constantly lie to ourselves or we let ourselves down, then it's going to affect our self-care. It's going to affect us as parents, as spouses, as friends or whatever. And then we're gonna it's going to affect ourselves internally because we're going to always be okay with not doing something that we set as a goal or not being okay with doing something that is that should be a priority that we do actually want to do. But we're so used to just saying we're going to do it and never doing it. It just becomes a habit. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's one yeah, thing I try to, to look at your, when it comes to life. Yeah, you really have to shift your mindset whenever it comes to like excuses and stuff. You have to... Yeah. You know, because it's easy, it's easy to get home from work or finish the work day and like walk out into the house and um, you've got to tick off like six things and say, oh, you know what, like we'll just do those tomorrow or I'll just, yeah, I'll get it done later. So day, easy. Right? So um, easy. So. And, and if you give yourself the ability to do that, then it, then, then like you said, it becomes a habit um, and then you do it more and more and then the next thing you know, like you're even more depressed because you've allowed yourself to fail. Yep. So, all right, Mike, well, this was a, a great conversation. If you want to plug your, your businesses that you're, you're running right now, if you want to plug anything, now would be the time to do it. Also, well, actually, before you do that, yeah. if you could give a tip to a brand new white belt starting in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, what would it be? <laughs> um, <clears throat> Man, be consistent even through injuries, right? I think I told you, like, my first year of jiu-jitsu, I broke my hand, I dislocated a rib, had a really bad um, uh, corneal abrasion, and then I had a, uh, 
Uh, I caught a thumb in the eye, which resulted in an orbital rim blowout fracture that required surgery. Ooh. At no point during that time did I stop continuing coming to class, um, except for after the surgery, immediately after the surgery. But I still would come, and I'd sit down on the side, and I'd observe. Um, because what that does is it helps kind of prolong that habit of being consistent um, and showing up. And just you know, like just be consistent, right? I, I think, um, is it Chris Howder said, like, it's not who's good, it's who's left um, at yep. the end of the day. So you just have to kind of keep going. Um, and it's going to suck, man. You're going to get smashed by some dickhead blue belt or dickhead purple belt. You know, he's just kind of toying with you. And, you know, everybody knows that person's a jerk, you know. Um, but if you just come and learn and you ask questions. And don't be afraid to ask questions. So be yeah. consistent. Don't be afraid to ask questions. So there's two things. Perfect. Well, guys, just to recap kind of what we cover over today, uh, the six tips that we have. I don't even really want to call it six tips to whatever. But, uh, you know, understanding the challenges that come with life and jujitsu and all that stuff. Uh, establishing clear priorities when it comes to your life and incorporating training into it. Effective time management, probably my weakest area. Mike sounds like he's crushing it in that. Uh, open communication and support. This is probably my biggest one that I actually do in my life. Integrating jujitsu with family time. Bring your family and make them do something with you in jujitsu if it's not training jujitsu. And then finally, mindfulness and self care. If we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of others, you know. So make sure that's a priority to you too. Uh, let us know, guys, at home. What do you do to incorporate jujitsu into your life? And how do you and your spouse or your significant other? Uh, make sure that each each person's cup is getting filled so you can continue to train and whatnot. Sh shoot me a DM in, on Instagram or Facebook or write it down below. If you're watching on Spotify, you guys can write it down below on Spotify. Um, Mike, if people want to check out your business and what you're doing and everything like that, where can they find you at? Yeah, so our business website's uh, frontlinemobilehealth.com. Super long. Um, but that's kind of what we do. We take care of uh, first responders, public safety professionals. So Fire and Leo uh, do some of their medical stuff for new hire, annual um, annual physicals, return to work, fit for duty, that sort of thing. Heck yeah, man. So uh, thank you so much, Mike, for coming on today, man. It's a great conversation. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I'm, I'm so happy that we got to, got to do this. Uh, I'm sure yeah. I'll probably be texting you later anyways. So. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, man. Commiserating so, on parenthood. Yeah, right. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching at home. And uh, we'll catch you next time. And remember, no oil checks here. Peace. Peace.